Yeah, I, I generally agree. I think you know you bring up a point about it feeling like raw power, and I think for the court, a lot of what we've seen over the last you know, seven or eight years has been that, not from the court itself necessarily, but from the folks trying to put people on the court. Um, the you know blockading of Merrick Garland's nomination in 2016 using a standard that had never existed prior to 2016. Uh, and then in 2020, okay, the, you know, we have a vacancy that came up, what was it, six weeks before the election? Let's fill it right now before the election. And so if you're someone from outside watching that, it really does seem like, you know, the judicial equivalent of Calvin Ball. It's like whatever rules anybody can use to get somebody on, uh, we're going to do that. And I think that necessarily makes the court look incredibly political. Um, I also think you've got the fact that the judges, justices treat it, as you said, like a death sentence in most cases, uh, raises the stakes incredibly because you're not talking about somebody being on the court for 10 or 15 or 20 years. Um, I, I figured out the, the actuarial tables for the court. And if Amy uh, Coney Barrett serves for as long as John Paul Stevens did, she will still be on the court in the 2060s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, we're dealing, suddenly it's gone from this thing somebody does for, a, you know, a, a respectful period of time to just this literal lifetime commitment uh, and a left, lifetime opportunity to exercise power. And what's especially concerning is the court is fundamentally not democratically accountable, small d democratically accountable to anybody. Um, they issue their decisions and people generally respect them. We haven't seen a president say in quite a while, well, the court has made their ruling, let them enforce it. Um, so again, the stakes become incredible. So every vacancy is incredibly high stakes. Uh, if you replace Scalia with Garland, that has implications into you know, the, the 2040s, as opposed to for the next five or 10 years. Um, and so it's become this, this just magnet of, of you know, this locus of pure power simply because that's what it's become. And I think it raises you know, really troubling questions, um, particularly because they're not elected. And uh, many of the recent uh, justices have been appointed by presidents who didn't win the popular vote. So that raises further questions. And I think at a moment where the court should probably be acting pretty modestly, um, you know, there were you know, certainly decisions they could have handed down in Dobbs consistent with all the justice preferences that didn't actually strike down Roe, for instance. Uh, instead, you're seeing this power being used really, really expansively. And I think that's a recipe for at some point the dam is going to break and somebody is going to say, okay, sure, you did this, but everybody's going to ignore it. And that's not a great place to be.